Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and saw as the ninth man got blown up, he went against Zero's rules and unfortunately had to pay the price. In this episode, it's been an hour and a half since we first arrived here and got our time limit. And we've done pretty much nothing, so hopefully in this episode we'll be able to move on throughout the ship and see what else there is to see. By the time they finished, an hour and a half of their nine hours was gone. All they had to show for it was impatience. Man, looks like we only got seven and a half hours left, okay? You really sure you want to just sit around? No one was willing to argue this time. Very well then. There's only one way for us to proceed. Sure not gonna be fun running around knowing we gotta jump when Zero says jump. Well, it's stupid to just sit around here doing nothing. Thanks to Snake's card, at least we have some idea of how this all works. Correct. And so long as we follow the rules, we should... Uh, we most likely... We will most likely be alright. But... But what? Who's going in which door? June looked toward the numbered doors. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. We can't have any more than five people in one door. All eight of us can't go in the same door. Then it would seem we will have to split up. Wait! Lotus looked terrified. I'm telling you now, there's no way in hell I'm that I'm going through door five. Come now, don't be selfish. Call me whatever the hell you want, I'm not going in there. If I'm going to have to walk through all that blood, then I'd rather just stay here. Ugh, <sighs> and we were doing so well. He shook his head sadly. Sorry, but I ain't going in there either. Someone else can go into door five. Oh, Santa, not you too. Hey man, I just bought these shoes. If you think I'm getting some creepy dude's blood all over him, you got another think coming. Is that an actual phrase? Because I... Because I... Because I always heard you've got another thing coming. So is another think coming an actual thing? That was the last straw. What the hell, man? Weren't you the one who kept saying we should get going? Yeah, so? Doesn't mean I wanted to go into door five. Oh, God. And there was another awkward silence. Finally, Seven spoke. Fine. I'll go into door five. I can't go in there alone, though. Anyone else willing to come with me? There was another long silence. This time, Snake was the one to break it. I'll go. What? Don't worry, you'll be fine. We may part now, but I'm certain we'll meet again later. How do you know that? Because I do. That's not an answer. If you're going, I'm going too. I'm going into door five. What am I going to do with you? There's nothing you have to do. He stepped forward. If I join you, the problem is solved, correct? Seven is seven and Snake is two. And if you add Clover's four and my one, the digital root will be five. Seven plus two plus four plus one equals fourteen. One plus four is five. Oh, it works perfectly! The four of us can go into door five. Wait, what about the other four? What's their digital root gonna be? Junpei did a quick mental calculation. Lotus, Santa, June, and Junpei remained. Their recent numbers were 8, 3, 6, and 5. So I actually, uh, funny enough, put in these numbers in the first episode and we saw what the digital root was, but just in case you forgot, 8, 3, 6, 5 digital root is 4, so it does in fact work out perfectly. 8365, what, the, what would their digital root be? That would of course be 4. 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 5 equals 22, 2 plus 2 equals 4. He repeated what he determined. It's 4. Add up our 4 bracelet numbers and the, digi and the digital root is 4. Then we can go into door 4. Yeah, huh, that worked out well. Junpei ran over the team assignments in his head one more time. 4 people would go into door 5. Seven, Snake, Clover, and Ace. Four people would go into door four. Lotus, Santa, June, and Junpei. 
Junpei had asked himself if the teams were what he really wanted. Beyond Door 5 was what remained of the ninth man. He never wanted to see that thing again, but something in him said it would be unwise not to examine the corpse even a little closer. Of course, if we went through door 5, he wouldn't be, be going with Lotus and Santa. True, it would be possible for him to bring June with him through door 5, but that would mean that she would have to see the horrific carnage that awaited there. Junpei didn't want that. Junpei was torn. Should he stay silent and go through door 4? Or should he stop them all and insist on door 5? As he turned his options over and over in his mind, Ace spoke up. All right then, it seems we've reached a conclusion. Shall we go? He began to walk toward door 5. Clover and Snake followed, with Seven a short distance behind. Junpei, which door do you want to go through? Okay, this is our first important decision in the game. This game has multiple different endings, and your decisions when we come to doors like these are very important on what ending you get. So, this playthrough I will be getting each and every ending, uh, and we'll make sure that I'll make sure that you guys get to see everything that this game has to offer, at least to my knowledge. So, for this first decision, uh, for this first decision, I'm going to be going through door 4. My reasoning for this is because, well, first of all, we don't have to bother everyone and you know, we don't have to waste time being like, okay, we have to move these people over here, move some people over there. And plus, if we keep with these, uh, if we keep with uh, what we have right now, then everyone, then the people who know each other will be able to stick together. So uh, Junpei and June will be going through door four, and Clover and Snake will be going through door five. So uh, from what we've seen so far, this is probably the best option for now. Junpei decided that door four would be fine. He would go through door four with Lotus, Santa, and June. Why did Junpei even consider doing otherwise? He would be there for June. For Kane Kurashiki. That seemed good. He felt it was the right choice to make. He made no shows of affection, but Junpei saw her as something more than just a friend from his childhood. He watched the other four walk toward their door. Ace, Snake, Clover, and Seven. Junpei said nothing as they left. Before long, they'd reached door five. They talked to one another for a few seconds, saying things Junpei couldn't hear, and then laid their hands on one, one by one on the scanner panel of the red. Ace grabbed the lever. His face tight with determination, he turned over his shoulder to look at Junpei and his companions. Goodbye. Be careful. As Ace pulled the lever, the door swung open, the mouth of a great hungry beast. Beyond the door, Junpei knew, lay the sad remains of the ninth man. It did not surprise him that Ace, Clover, and Seven hesitated. The body was not a pleasant thing. Snake had no such problems, as his blindness made him immune to the horror. He stepped through the door, his feet making a wet splack in the pool of blood. Do you intend to kill me? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? Snake had not even bothered to turn around, but the other three steeled themselves and stepped through the door. Door 5 swung shut, closing with a heavy finality of metal upon metal. Junpei and his companions scrambled to the door. They pressed their ears to it, in an attempt to hear what might be taking place on the other side. It's beeping. It's just like before. Probably the sound of the detonator on the bracelet. Do you think they're... okay? June's face showed her concern more plainly than her words ever could. Almost as though in response to her question, a voice rang out from the other side of the door. It was Seven. Hey, there it is! That's gotta be the dead thing! Come on, get over here! We gotta authenticate! And the beeping stopped. The sighs of relief were audible, even through the heavy door. Whew, looks like it stopped. Junpei and his companions leaned away from the door and breathed a collective sigh of relief of their own. Hey guys, you doing all right over there? They'd heard Seven's voice, but it wouldn't hurt to be sure. Yep, we're fine. Despite the recent danger, Clover's voice was as bubbly as ever. 
Oh hey, I'm gonna tell you about this whole dead thing, okay? The dead is just like the red, but the color's different. You know how the red was red? Well, the dead is blue. Other than that, it's just like the red. Authenticating is the same too. Awesome, thanks, that helps a lot. Well, we should probably move on now. You better be careful out there. Roger that. Junpei and the others left door 5 and headed toward door 4. They stood in front of the red and placed each of their hands upon it. Four asterisks appeared on the screen. Junpei grabbed the lever and turned around. You guys ready? Yeah. Sure. Let's go. None of them looked particularly optimistic, but their faces were set. Junpei nodded to them and turned back toward the red. All right, let's go. With strength and determination, he pulled the lever. Run! The four of them leapt through the door together. The moment they had passed through it, each heard a cold electronic sound coming from their left wrist. In the center of each bracelet, a red skull appeared and began to flash. The detonator's countdown had begun. In the long moment that each of them spent staring at their wrists, the numbered door behind them closed, and the sound of metal on metal reverberating down the hallway. There was no way back now. They were committed. If they could not find the device that deactivated their detonators... Hey, where the hell's the dead? How would I know? Don't give me that crap! Start looking! I already am! They began to run, eyes looking frantically for the device that was the key to their salvation. The hallway they found themselves running down was a long one, easily 300 feet in length. On the right side of it stood a series of wooden doors, all nearly identical. If they had taken time to think, they would have likely discerned that the doors led to cabins. Don't tell me the dead is in one of those rooms! Oh no! How many rooms do you think there are? Junpei was too frightened to count properly, but at his best guess, there were seven or eight of them. Ah, uh, fuck! There wasn't time to count them, to be sure. Junpei ran to the nearest door. He grabbed the knob and shook it hard. It wouldn't open. It didn't feel locked, more like someone had hammered an iron plate over the other side of the door. Junpei turned around to find another door, and saw that his companions had already run to the doors of their own. They did not seem to be having any more success than he had. Their own words confirmed his fears. Shit! This one's no good! Same here. It's not moving! Jun was last to speak up. As Junpei looked in a direction, his eye caught something that he hadn't noticed before. A small red light. It flashed at him dimly from the end of the hallway. That's it! Over there! Even as he yelled, he ran. He grabbed Santa, Lotus, and June and pulled them toward the light. Santa called out to them as he ran. Hey, how many more seconds do we have? How would I know? Our time limit is 81 seconds. I know that, goddammit! I'm asking you how many seconds we have left! In all likelihood, Junpei figured nearly a minute had already passed since the door had closed behind them. If that was true... Urgency foremost in all their minds, they arrived at the end of the hallway. The dead sat on the left wall, blinking almost tauntingly at them. Hurry! Junpei grabbed a hold of the machine, his hands slick with sweat and shaking. He slammed his hand against the scanner panel. The other three quickly followed suit. With a grunge, Santa yanked the lever downward. Looks like it stopped. His hands beginning to steady, Junpei wiped away some of the sweat that had beheaded his forehead. As they caught their breath, the four companions began to look around. At the end of the hallway lay a heavy-looking set of double doors. Set into the walls of the hallway on either side of the larger door were two smaller ones. They all needed an inspecting, but Junpei began with the largest of the three, the double doors. How many times did he come across similar doors with similar results, he wondered. Or perhaps, he corrected himself, more a lack of results. Whatever the reason, the door remained firm and unyielding, and refused to allow Junpei or anyone else passage. Near the handle was a small keyhole. 
Above the keyhole was a small symbol engraved on the brass. Mail? He wasn't quite sure what to make of it, and stared at it for a moment in confusion. It was June that corrected him. No, that's not the symbol for mail. That's probably the symbol of Mars. Well, technically, they are the same symbol, but I saw a number of similar symbols near the main stairway. The symbols of the solar system. The sun. Saturn. The earth. At least, that's what I'm assuming. So this isn't the man symbol, it's a symbol for Mars? I think so, yes. While Junpei and Jun talked, Santa had disappeared. They turned to find him at some distance down the hallway. He had gone to check the other doors. Eventually, he reached the last of them and jogged back. It took him only a moment to catch his breath again. Here's the deal. None of the other doors open. Then that must mean... We only have two more doors. Lotus examined the doors on either side of the larger double door. Each one had a metal plate attached to it. Junpei figured they were probably room numbers. The door on the left read B92, and the door on the right pro proclaimed that it led to B93. Alright, let's open them. Yeah. Junpei put his hand on the doorknob for the door that said room 92. Santa moved to the door to room 93. They made it through the numbered door alive. There was nothing more to be afraid of. Junpei and Santa looked at each other and nodded. One, two, three! In unison, they pushed against their respective doors and promptly found themselves in a new room. Jun followed Junpei as he threw him open the door. They turned around and saw that the door on the other side was open as well. Through the door was another person, his mouth agape. It was Santa. Hey, uh, it opened. Yeah. It did. Junpei and Santa looked at each other. They had not expected the doors to yield so easily. Lotus's calm voice broke into their thoughts. Maybe this is all a part of Zero's plan. I can't say I enjoy being treated like someone's puppet. As she headed for room 93, Lotus continued. Well, now that we have these two rooms, I'm sure there's something in here that'll help us get out of here. Let's find it. Santa and I will search this room. Junpei and Jun search the other one. All right. Okay. We've got a pretty large escape room ahead of us. And with this, arriving in room 92 of the second class cabins, I'm going to leave off the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and see what we can find in these rooms. I mean, they're pretty huge. They're bound to have something in them. And of course, if they don't have anything, then we can't really proceed. Then what's the point of the game? Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.